like it's just it's rough man i feel bad for i america's just in a tussie it's having a hard time yeah tussie it's in a tussie what the hell is that i'm gonna stop swearing this whole podcast i won't say fuck once <laughs> you just did ah, after this i won't say fuck. it at all God. no more fox shits damn pisses cocksuckers motherfuckers nothing this is going to be the most boring podcast ever, full of <laughs> politics and terribleness. <laughs> well, well, fuck that. That, that, did, that really didn't go too well for the past five seconds. <laughs> so I think I'm moving on with that. <laughs> oh, damn it. No, it feels good to be home. We, uh, we went to Nashville over the weekend, and I have to say that uh, the people that we met at the Nutrition Factory were phenomenal. Yes. I love our fans. They're so cool. It's pretty. It's it's funny because uh, they listen to everything so intently because n- numbers of them couldn't wait to tell Shane to go fuck himself. Yes, I mean dozens. They were expecting the show. They wanted it all. They didn't see Shane. They were telling Mike to go fuck himself. Yep. Mike's six foot five. Everybody. He's yep. way more handsome than Shane. Shane's five foot seven. They both have big dicks. Mike <laughs> likes to wear his fucking gray sweatpants around here, make me feel inadequate about myself a little often, <laughs> but. Um, I don't know why I'm, it's he, you can't not look. It's fucking eye level for me. Yeah, fucking tall bastard. Son of but anyway, bitch. they were telling him. And if there's one person you shouldn't tell to go fuck themselves in this company, it's Mike. Yeah, he actually might punch you in the face. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which was a right because he's like, like. <laughs> There's so many, you know, we all have the young stories about me doing a bunch of dumb shit in college. Mike actually had a fucking nasty temper. Oh, yeah. Arrested a few times. Uh-huh. Complete prick mm-hmm. on the mound in baseball. Yep. Loved shit talking. He's going to fuck you up. That was his whole goal. Like, I don't know if I would have liked him whenever we were younger. I probably, I probably would have ended up fighting him. He probably would have called me short. Yeah. Ignorant names, and I would have chopped his ass down, and then he probably would have fucking... He'd smack me in the teeth, and... He'd fight you, and then, like, ten minutes later, he'd be pouring a drink together, Yeah, so. he... he he does have that quality. Yeah. He, yeah, he lets that shit go pretty quick. Yep. Yeah. Unless th- you're, like, fucking with the shit. Yeah, and that's not Or good. call him Shane. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was a, it was an awesome fucking weekend. Tons and tons of people came out. Um, thank you all for everything you guys do. The support that you guys have for the company and just overall for their, their lives. Mm-hmm. How many fucking, how many people came up and just talked about the good that they're doing in their life? Mm-hmm. because of a handful of videos oh yeah i mean uh that, that one dude just got up and straight up quit his fucking job oh, yeah this, fucking... Dude, this dude's like yeah he says i told my boss to go fuck himself yeah. and i'm like he's like you actually got me fired and i'm like i got you fired i don't fuck i was like oh maybe you like did something that um, that uh that went against hr uh An hr email. rules yeah. and uh no he told his boss to go fuck himself because he was tired of all the bullshit. Yep. Uh, hated hated his boss, hated his job, hated everything about it. And he's like, I realized that I was negative because of my work. Mm-hmm. So he got fired. And then he became, uh, he's a realtor now. Does real he's, estate. He's doing pretty well down in Alabama. Yep. He did have that. He w- had that in the works before he told his boss to go fuck himself. Oh, yeah. So he was smart about it. <laughs> I think, but uh, no, that was pretty cool. He's like, I heard it on the podcast, and I was. He's like, it's literally that fucking easy. And it, you know, if I'm not fucking happy, why the fuck am I doing it? Yeah, especially whenever <clears throat> this is like uh, that whole YOLO thing, and you fucking you only live once. <laughs> I think that was. Uh, I think the youngsters blew that out of proportion. It wasn't about doing cocaine and going to Burning Man. Okay, everybody. <laughs> It was about enjoying your life and actually doing good. In my opinion, at least. Maybe some people burning, man. I don't know. I'm not going there. I'd go there. Fuck no. I'm it's not a going fucking there. sight. I'd like my pecker to stay attached to my body. Yeah, it might fall off. And I really don't want to see Hannah get plowed by a fucking six foot five man. <laughs> I'd like to be that guy. It's not that. No. It's just a bunch of music and sex. And they burn. Kind of like Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. But uh, no. It was awesome. Had a fucking blast. Yeah. Uh, I love meeting all you guys. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. It's fucking riot. And it, and I think it's just because of the stories that they tell me, not so much my stories to them. Yeah. Like, I'm more interested about what they're doing in their lives and how they're becoming better and what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, meeting the ki- meeting people's kids, uh, everything. It was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, a couple crazy bastards driving six, eight, nine hours. Yeah, there was yeah. a few of them. Thank you. Yeah, it was fuck. awesome. No, it was good, though. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people, uh, they see their penis again, which is exciting. Yeah. A bunch of people that lost big time weight. Yep. Like the Huge pictures that they were showing. And it was like, uh, I, I think it's crazy because we don't put out, uh, 
we don't, I don't have like a program mm -hmm. like, oh, this is the diet to follow. This is this. This is that. I don't uh, I don't put that out there because uh, everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Everybody operates differently. Some people are good with keto. I'm not. Some people are good with uh, with like the South Beach diet. I'm not. I'm good with chicken and rice. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's so fucking stupid simple that it just works for me and yeah. the way my brain works. So, but in the videos that we have, we tell everybody to shut the fuck up and do the work. Just stop being a fucking pussy. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Wake up, do the fucking work. Uh, I don't want to wake up and do the cardio. You know, I just don't feel like it. No shit. Nobody fucking feels like it, dude. Do the fucking work. Yeah. So all these people have taken those simple, hardcore concepts and applied it to their life in their own way and have become that much better in their life. Yeah. 75. One dude lost 150 pounds. Insane. Was nuts. In like a fucking year. And we're not talking like, we're not talking like just one demographic of people. Yeah. There were young people that were saying this. There were older people that were saying this. There were gentlemen in their fucking 40s and 50s that were saying it. Mm -hmm. Like they were there with their wives, waited in line for an hour. Mm -hmm. They get up and then they talk about it. And I'm like, holy fuck. Like, dude, you're in your 50s. You watched a You Looked On Way because you knew that you wanted to stay alive because I would say that like they're getting later in life. Mm -hmm. They've worked their entire life. They had their family, and then they want to enjoy their time with their wives. Yeah. You know, they want to enjoy the time that they have with their person that stood by them their entire life, <clears throat> and they're overweight, out of shape, went to the doctors, and the doctor's like, bro, you ain't in fucking good shape. Mm -hmm. Goes home, YouTube's like, how to lose weight. And then all of a sudden, like a recommended Seth Rosie video popped up. Yeah. And it talked to him about not being a pussy, and he's like, that was it. And I'm like, bro, is that not crazy? Yeah. Yep. It was crazy seeing like the, these couples that were a little bit older. Yeah, because like they have like a fucking energy. Like they came into that store with like an energy and like a. Bro, they were fucking. Pumped. Bro, most people in their mid forties, late forties, early fifties, dude, you, they're not walking around like some of these couples that came in to see us. I'm like, man, I'm like, look how genuinely happy these fucking two are. They're pumped. Dude's been working the same job the last 30 fucking years and has a whole new appreciation on life because he takes care of himself. It was wild. Yeah. It was wild. Love it. I fucking love it. I like the stories. Yeah. I enjoy them. Like, I, I felt like, uh, what the one guy say, the, the one owner of the store, he's like, what does he talk to all of them about? <laughs> yeah. Because I take, you know, a few minutes with everybody. Uh -huh. And Pat was like, he's like, well, he listens to him. He, like, these people have a connection with the videos that we've done, the podcast, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, I just want to know about them. That's it. Tell me some cool shit. Yeah. Tell me what you did, how you, how you found out about the videos or what we're doing, or tell me a fucked up joke, something. I ask way more questions, I think. I, yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, where are you from? How far do you drive? What do you do? Yeah, do you like you your do? job? Like, because it's, uh, it's a thing like, we're, what do you do for a living? And it's like, so if you are like, fuck, there was everybody, yard barbers. Guys that work in a mill, cops, correctional officers, yep, military, military, you name it, and it's like all these people from different fucking different places throughout the different job titles, mm -hmm. all into it. It's it's important to ask people these things, I, like I like like normal people, like the people you see every day. Well, yeah, like it's important to ask those things. Like it's like you don't always have to talk about yourself and all your shit. Yeah. Like asking someone about how they're doing or how their job is or what what do you actually do do in a day yeah. makes them feel so fucking special. They're like, fuck, no one ever asked me that. Well, fuck yeah. When somebody, <laughs> like whenever I meet somebody new and it's like, they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. I sell t-shirts and nutritional supplements. Oh, really? <laughs> like wholesale? Not really. Uh, this is great because you don't know who I am and I'm going to tell you all about it. And, or you could just Google me later or they figure it out and then they Google me later. And then the next day they're like, hey, dude, you're a big deal. And I'm like, not really. I'm just a regular Listen, fucking dad from I'm Western PA. Seth. Complete jerk off. Just having a good time and I want to see people do good shit. I've done some pretty incredible things in my life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, no, it's pretty cool because uh, I just – all the people – yeah, that's really the that's really the most special thing about all of it is the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The one dude was fucking huge. He was like four hundred fifty pounds. Mm -hmm. I think you talked to him. He was at the uh, the, fir the, the first the first one Hendersonville. Henderson yeah. yeah, he was a large fella. Yeah. He was a big guy still, but fucking yeah. bro, he was massive. And I'm like, dude, you got your shit together. Like that that has to be really hard. Like I'm chubby now, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ah, you know, I got to get my shit together. 
uh, but I've never been to that point. And to get moving, to get everything going, because to get yourself to that point was difficult. Mm -hmm. So to get it off is going to be twice as hard. Yep. And to get yourself moving and that dude lose 150 pounds and he's like, I got 100 more to go. I'm like, God damn, that is crazy. Fuck yeah, man. Crazy. Yep. That's exciting, though. Good mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. Cool beans. But uh, now we'll get into a uh, little bit of Nashville. Yeah. Nashville was, it was, Shane, have you ever been to Nashville? I have not been to Nashville. Well, we might as well get this party started and yeah. talk about Let's some talk Nashville. About <laughs> good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the HWMF Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferris, here with my heterosexual life mate, Bob, and our mediocrely sized person, tripod, huge penis, marketing of, director of marketing, Shane. Hi. Yeah. It's a good intro. <laughs> that was a great one. Today. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know where you were going with it because you kind of stopped. I, I like you, though. I don't hate you. No, I, I get You're it. just a little bit of a prick. You're a little bit honest. Uh, people also wanted to kick your ass for numerous reasons. Yeah. The first being, not a big Tennessee Volunteers fan. I didn't say that. You said fuck the Volunteers. I was kidding. They, that one dude, like, took offense to One him. dude wanted to fuck you up. He oh, did. Geez. Yeah. I, I think he was a diehard. Mm -hmm. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. He was, Who's he's like, where's Shane at? And I'm like. I was a little more abrupt yeah, than most of the people. Some attitude. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, he talks shit on my volunteers. I'm like, oh, <laughs> man. I wanted to be like, yeah, they do suck, but. <laughs> no. I like the volunteers. It was. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest, okay? Let's go. Let's go. What do you got? I had no idea who the fucking volunteers were ah! this weekend. <laughs> Because I'm like, I'm like, who are these volunteers that everyone keeps talking about in Tennessee? Like, what do they help with? <laughs> Am I a volunteer? Yeah, like, that's what I mean. What are we volunteering for? <laughs> oh my god! god and then I'm like, oh okay, it's actual. They weren't. They they have not been good since Peyton Manning. That's where Peyton went to went to college. Oh okay. Yeah, him and his huge forehead. Mm, um, they both went there. <laughs> I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan. Uh. Um, Man, I can't believe that was a reason. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You said it with enthusiasm, and he was saying it back to you with enthusiasm as well. It was intense. Oh, I was also a big Buffalo Bills fan. I was a big <clears throat> Bills fan. They said they, they didn't like you, too, because you talk shit on the Bills. Uh, I didn't talk. When did I talk shit on the Bills? Said, you said you did one time on the podcast. They remember fucking everything. I don't remember shit. I think, well, uh, I think they just want to beat you up just because. Yeah, just to do it. Yeah. 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 Those people didn't think Mike was Shane. No, they knew. Yeah. yeah. No offense. <laughs> the height thing. Yeah. The height thing. That should be the biggest yeah. one. Um, but, so, in Nashville, Down, I... Like, downtown Nashville. I was expecting Nashville to be, like, this clean, high-end honky-tonk. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like, I don't know why I just had this... What was that fucking show on... It was called Nashville. Remember the music show? Yeah. It was on ABC uh -huh. years ago with the chick and the dude, and he mm -hmm. had problems, and... All the different things, and they all sang country music. Yep. What was that bitch's name in the show? She was a big deal. I can't remember. Can you look that up, Shane? I am. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> that was the fucking concept that I had. Okay. Is it I Hayden? Thought, what? Hayden Panettiere? No, no. Oh, that's the other. Juliet Barnes? Yeah, Juliet. That was her. I forgot. I completely forgot about her. The older broad. I liked her. Uh, Raina James. Raina James. Hmm. She had like the dark hair, red hair. I never got into that yeah. show. No? Mm -mm. I liked it because I thought that's what Nashville was. I had a even different idea of what Nashville should have oh, been. Oh, really? I, th I thought that. So what did you think it was? I don't know. Like, I knew it was like a, a, a city, a big city. Yeah. But I just thought it was going to be country because it's like country music and i thought so too a honky tonk yeah like high-end stuff i don't know why i thought maybe it was gonna be a dirt road <laughs> get the fuck out of here <laughs> maybe not that extreme but um you're too high this morning i am pretty stoned right now <laughs> <laughs> so we got on to broadway so we got there mm -hmm. landed we went to the hotel, mm -hmm. uh, the Omni. We stayed at a nice hotel. Yeah, we're like nice hotel. In downtown. We were only a couple blocks away from Broadway. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Broadway Street. Yeah, like that's where all the cool bars are and, you know, honky tonks. Mm -hmm. I expected high-end stuff. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a high-end part that we didn't get to. So, however, we go there and uh, all of a sudden I got a smell 
of uh, of urine. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, maybe there's like, I don't know, some piss somewhere. And then I realized like I saw seven bums. And I'm like, oh boy, homeless is a big problem here. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that would explain the piss. <laughs> then all of a sudden we get there and Broadway Street is like, uh, is like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's not pretty. It's not clean. It is intense. Fucking. It was way like I don't. I, it's inexplainable almost. Yeah, it threw it threw me off because of what I thought it was going to be even more. Like that's what really got me. Bro, it wasn't. It was a fucking bunch of woo girls that are shit faced out of their fucking mind. People stumbling all over the place. It's fucking one o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> and there are fucking shit faced bachelorette bachelorette parties everywhere. Fucking bums on every fucking corner. It was nuts. And apparently what we saw was fucking nothing. Because all the restrictions and all the shit. It's a fucking mess with that there, by the way. Yeah, that's a shit show. Bunch of liberal um, cocksuckers. Yeah, fucking masks outside. Yeah. That's while you're outside, masks. walk I mean, around. You can walk into the bar and sit down and take your mask off, but don't you dare stand up. You stand up, mask on. No dancing. You dance, mask on. No dancing in some spots. No fun. No fun. Stay out. Yeah. It was a shit show. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it was fucking nuts. It was so... They called it... So the people were calling it Nash Vegas. Yeah. I was like, Nash Vegas. Holy shit. So it's like... It made sense once I saw it that I'm like, this is why they call it Nash Vegas. Yeah. Because it was a shit show on Broadway Street. It was. Like... I, I probably could have counted. I think they said there's a game where they play like they you take a drink every time you see a fucking uh, bachelorette party. Oh shit. Oh yeah. It was there, there was it was fucking. It's more debauchery than Vegas. Vegas at least it's like Lamborghinis and like high end whores. There it was like fucking woo girls shit faced out of their fucking mind, vomiting in their hair. Fucking people passed out on the fucking steps of your hotel. Like, it was nuts. Like, oh, my God. Like, bro, just shit show everywhere. It was unreal. I couldn't believe it. I literally thought that was one of you guys laying on the steps when you put it on your story. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, we got, like, like the, this, was a, close. this was a very nice hotel. Yeah. Th- there are very nice things in d- downtown Nashville. But what goes on there and how people, and, like, what occurs is fucking unreal. Mm-hmm. Unreal. Bro, it's, it's fucking shit show. It was a shit show. Mm-hmm. A lot of the people from there are like, yeah, yeah, you don't go downtown. You go downtown for one reason. They're like, you don't take your family there. No, no, no. <laughs> no don't take the kids there. I'm like, yeah, I fucking quickly realized that. Like, I've always wanted to go to Nashville with Hannah. I, I just, I thought it was going to be like, uh, I don't know. I thought I was just going to be able to like walk here to there and like sit outside and it'd be really nice out, be tuned up, have a drink hear the live music but it like i don't know it was a lot of alcohol i mean a lot i didn't have any like a lot of daytime alcohol in me so like maybe that was why but i don't know like in vegas i feel like i can get a little fucking day drunk Mm -hmm. and like people watch and carry on and have fun there it's like buck wild Mm -hmm. like it's fucking fucking balls deep All in, we are fucking shit-faced at 11 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like, falling on your face, scraping your knees, like the whole fucking wobble walk. I saw it all. It was nuts. But that's, I mean, if if you go to Vegas, no, if you go to Nashville, apparently that's what you're going for. A lot of, uh, also a lot of, uh, a lot of older women. Yeah. A lot of older women. A lot of, like, midlife crisis action. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was. I mean, there was the woo girls, and then there was those women. Yeah. It's like, it was like, let's go to Nashville. Yep. Like, I just husband's got... a fucking prick, works too much, doesn't pay attention to me. Husband cheated on me, going through divorce, Nashville. Yep. <laughs> Make everything better. 
<laughs> It'll make everything better. We walked by the, well, the one hotel room. There's fucking, these women were in their mid mid to late 40s. Mm-hmm. They were eating edibles. Yeah. It yeah. was first thing in the fucking morning yep. in the hotel. And the, and the one lady's like, yeah, yeah, just just eat the whole thing. We'll assess the we'll assess the situation in an hour. And I'm like, eat the whole fucking thing. I never do that. Eat the whole fucking <laughs> thing. You, you don't eat edibles and you're about to eat the whole fucking thing and walk around Nashville. You're out of your fucking mind, lady. Assess the situation in an hour. Yeah, you're going to be fucking catatonic on the yeah, fucking couch not being able to move downstairs. Yeah, you're not walking. You're going to be like, I'm freaking the fuck out. Oh, yeah, they were going in. Yeah. It was, it was uh, yeah, completely different than what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Completely different. I can only imagine that place whenever it was fucking, like, no COVID yeah. fucking insane. Yeah, because then they, they also, everything closed at 1130. Because COVID doesn't come out at night. Right. Or, or that's when it comes or out. Or it does. Yeah, yeah you got to go home. Night, go home because it's out. Oh, yeah. It's nocturnal. It's a, yeah, it's a nocturnal, uh, yeah, virus. Bro, it was nuts there. I've never seen anything like it. I wasn't so turned off Friday when we got there and we were walking around. It was just uh, like it was just taking in all the shit, right? Yeah, yeah. But then Saturday morning when I went out on my run and they're ho- like literally hosing out the fronts of these bars and like shit's running into the street. I'm like, it smells like piss, shit, and fucking Clorox right now. Like, this mm-hmm. is disgusting. Because that's what it was. Like, I was running through everything, and I'm like, ugh. It, I'm, it, but that's what I mean. Like, I don't know. I, Vegas is a little different, I think. I think I get a different vibe in Vegas. Why do I get a different vibe in Vegas? It's just shinier. Like, maybe it's just, sh- like, shiny. Think that's what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's because you were there with Hannah and Cheez-Its. I mean, okay, so here's the thing. Like, <laughs> if I if I was like... Hey, Hannah, I'm going to go to Vegas with my buddies. If it's not, I mean, I don't really do anything else with anybody else but you guys. But if I was like, I'm going to Vegas, I'm a bad example. I don't I wouldn't do anything. But if I go to Vegas, I feel like cocaine and hookers. Like, that's what everybody thinks of in Vegas. Mm -hmm. When actually, if you go to Vegas with like your significant other, you can have a fucking blast. Yeah, There's fucking sick pools. Go to pool bars. Mm -hmm. You go to six shows. You can gamble in numbers of different casinos, high-end casinos. You can go to Old Vegas and see a shit show there. Go to the mall. Go to the fucking high-end malls. There's Gucci stores, Louis Vuitton stores. You can just window shop at all these fucking crazy high-end stores. It's fun. Like, so whenever I go with a significant other, when Hannah and I go, like, pool bar. Stay at a hotel with a fucking sick pool. Like, awesome. Then you're going to go to a show. We get all fucked up. We could eat mushrooms. We could eat acid together and go do a show. Hmm. You could. There's all this to do, romantically, kind of, but still a shit show, mm-hmm. kind of like my own version of it. Personal. One. Or you can get fucking stoned out of your mind and hang out by the pool and people watch, or go walk the fucking strip high out of your mind. Like you're cool. You can do anything. Or it can be filled with fucking sex, debauchery, strip clubs, cocaine, nuts. In Nashville, kind of like. Maybe I missed. I missed. I might. I was only. I was only there for three days, so I might have missed something. Mm. Maybe there's a ver, there's a part of Nashville we don't know about. But I feel like if Hannah was like, we're taking a girls' trip to Nashville, and I'm like, oh, so like your goal is to get fucked by a cowboy? I don't know. Is that like the thing? <laughs> like, is that, I think we're the fucking woo girls gonna go get all fucked up in Nashville and do all this. It's like, okay, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> You're not <laughs> going. <laughs> I don't think I'd be like, hey, Hannah. You know what? I hope you have a lovely time in Nashville. <laughs> Go enjoy yourself. No, fuck that place. Uh, uh, you ain't going. Uh-uh. Nope. You just you just reminded me. You ever hear that song Ram Ranch? No. Oh fuck. It's a. Uh, it's this fucking crazy. I don't know. Funny song. It's about eighteen naked cowboys on a fucking ranch. It's so fucked up. What are you doing listening to that song, dude? I didn't look it up. Somebody else showed me. It was fucking hilarious. You and your music. You gotta listen to it. Shane is a cultured man. Yep, he's very diverse with what he listens to. No, I but I, but, but the thing is, that's what I mean. Like downtown Nashville, like threw me off. Now, when we went to Hendersonville and Murfreesboro, really, oh, they nice. were like they were like this. Yeah, they really. were like where we live. Yep. So probably the outskirts is is like uh, a lot of people did say that Nashville is growing astronomically and getting very scary. They say people are moving to Tennessee at an alarmingly high rate. Yeah. 
because I mean it, it's already becoming super liberal there. Well, the the one guy was saying he's like, if you would have saw downtown Nashville five years ago, he's like, it looked like a different city. Really? He's like, ten years ago, it was completely different. Really? Yeah. He's like, it wasn't these all these high rises and all this shit. He's like, it was. He's like, it was just country music. He's like, you came to listen to country music, live shows. Oh, no shit. Oh, dude, yeah. He's like, I the, didn't know that. The whole history of like of music is there, you know, not just country music. So like, he's like, it wasn't always these high rises and all this shit. He's like, it was like a flat city. So maybe, maybe because the Nashville show was from like five, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I had that thought process process yeah maybe we just need to go to the good parts of nashville yeah maybe not broadway street i'm sitting here fucking shit talking broadway street and then it's like listen, it's one fucking it's two blocks dickhead it literally is yeah you're cocksucker and yeah. you're saying all this ignorant stuff no i've read and we'll also got to throw this out there it was cloudy and rainy and shitty as fuck like the whole weekend like i feel like maybe a little bit of sunshine and some blue <clears> skies would have like shed a little bit more light on it i don't know Hannah's not going there. No. no. I did run one, down one block that looked pretty nice. Like, oh, it yeah. had, like, nicer restaurants and, like, nicer shops, not just, like... I was just... I just didn't... I was I'm, I was very surprised per, surprised by the uh, number of uh, homeless people. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Like, and they were very abrasive as well. Mm -hmm. Like, they were walking around. They were asking people for cigarettes. They were, like like, cornering them and asking them. Yeah. I saw a few of them pissing like in corners of the hotels. Yeah, they're just just whip their dick the out right there. It was crazy. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Good good restaurants though. Oh, we did go to restaurants. Mm -hmm. So we went to Cane Prime and uh, Bourbon and Bourbon and Bourbon Steak. Cane Prime was good. Mm -hmm. I saw a fan there. Yep. It was exciting. Yeah. Uh, his, I got out of the truck. I might have been a little high. I got out of the truck, and I was like, yeah, fucking A, let's go. And then the wife was like, that's Seth Ferrosi. <laughs> she, she looked over, no, she's like, no fucking way, Seth Ferrosi. Like, I mean, I popped out of the truck, said it, and like, right there. She's like, yep. And I'm like, all right. So I guess, yeah, that's really, it was like, it was almost like, so you really do say this dumb shit all the time. <laughs> yes. I, I really do. It's funny. We pulled up there. We got there so, like, we got there quick. Like, I didn't know we were, like, right there. And I was changing my shirt, had my shirt off. Valet, like, opened the door, and there's, like, ten people right there. And, like, I'm like, oh, hey, like, what's going what's on? What's up? I'm half naked. Get out. And then you good. you stormed out. And then that couple, they, like, whipped around yeah. <laughs> as soon as you said fucking A. It was fucking funny. It was, it was a riot. <laughs> Uh, no, but we went to Cane Prime. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was a good steakhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, really great service. Mm -hmm. If anybody goes to Cane Prime, we met a tremendous server. He was there. Um, he was actually, since it's, he does some serving, but he also just is an, is an assistant as well because of the down, you don't have as many people there mm -hmm. because of everything that's going on with the COVID. Uh, but his name is Tommy. Mm -hmm. And we refer to him. Thomas is his name, but being the fucking jerk offs that we are, and we got a little tuned up, we referred to him as Backdoor Tommy. Yes. So we're at a big time steakhouse. <laughs> oh, God. And I don't know how it came about it, just saying well, fucked up shit. Well, no, I'll tell you how it came about. You know, Mike was really coming on to him right in front of me, you know, which rubbed me the wrong way. And, and then it was all about Backdoor Tommy all night. Yep. And Thomas was feeding into it himself. He did. Pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> kind of <laughs> fucked up the weekend. <laughs> But uh, so we uh, we were fucking with him the whole night and just started calling him backdoor Tommy. Mm -hmm. And so we, we were like, we were like, hey, uh, we were really fucked up by the end of this thing. Yeah. The waitress, I was, and she's carrying on. And then I was like, we're going to make backdoor Tommy famous. And she's like, OK, like, whatever, guys. <laughs> so everybody, if you do go to Kane Prime down there in Nashville, ask for your server to be backdoor Tommy. Yep. And have the balls to say it. Don't be a pussy. Yeah. Don't be like Thomas. No, mm -hmm. backdoor Tommy. And then whenever you go there, if you don't get backdoor Tommy, ask for him. Be like, is backdoor Tommy here? We heard he is a phenomenal server. Yeah, like call, make a reservation, request backdoor Tommy. Backdoor Tommy. Like put that in your notes. Yes, put it in the notes. Type yep. it in, like, because you can do everything online. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep. He's a great guy. He was a fucking great sport. He was. He started feeding into it. With he Mike. dove right in. Oh yeah, he didn't hold back. Mm -hmm. It was pretty funny. I liked it. 
Yeah, there was the one lady. She was all fucked up at the other table, too. Oh, yeah, like the belly laughs. No, she was Dying. cackling and belly laughing. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> <laughs> Lady's like, she's having the big one tonight. I'm like, oh, no shit, huh? <laughs> Oh, fuck. No, that was a really good time. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome. We had uh, pretty good steaks there. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, what was the sides that we got there? I don't even know if I remember. Oh, we got bone marrow. That was the, uh, that was the appetizer. Oh, yeah, we, we had bone, bone marrow. marrow. That was fire. Yep. Big fan of it. I, don't I really, liked it. I don't get it in many places. <clears throat> but they did a good job because they had the garlic, the fresh roasted garlic with the salt fire if, if i could like describe that taste it's just like the like the really good rendered down fat spots from like a ribeye mm-hmm. you know what i mean just yep. like that burst of flavor but the garlic and the salt the sea salt salt was fire yeah yeah really good yep and then i had a wagyu ribeye there. i don't remember what i had you had uh Fuck, what did you get? I can't remember. <laughs> Jesus. Because what did we get for this? We got a, we did get an 80 day dry oh, aged. We got the 80 day dry tom- aged tomahawk. For like the table. They the like table, cut it yeah. up. We could each have a couple little pieces of it. Mm-hmm. That was what, good. What did you get? Did you get the ribeye? The bone in ribeye? Oh, that's what I got. I got the bone in ribeye. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It yeah, was good. you and Zach got the same steak yeah. that night, I think. Yeah. I did. Good call. Mm hmm. But then, uh, so it was good. It was delicious. They mm-hmm. had pretty good desserts there as well. Yeah. I was actually, uh, their desserts did, uh, what was the one? It was like a fucking banana bread. Banana bread. The banana bread they had was really fucking good. Chocolate creme brulee. Uh, which was okay. It's okay. I like vanilla creme brulee better. Yeah, I had to get it because it's chocolate creme brulee, and we like creme brulee. Yep. Um, uh, but the next night, we went to Bourbon Steak. Now... Everybody knows we're big steakhouse people. We're talking about it already. Kane was pretty good. It wasn't bad. Really great service. The service was good. Uh, but our big steakhouse is Eddie V's here in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and Jeff Ruby's still is top notch. Jeff Ruby's in Columbus is still, it's there. It's it. Yep. Love it. Great steaks. So we're on the hunt for finding one that like rivals Jeff Ruby's. Mm-hmm. Like where we have to question the hell out of everything and yeah. not pick it. Because it's fun, because it's just what we like to do. We go and we have a good time. We get, because it is higher end and everybody thinks you have to be proper. Well, we just named a fucking server backdoor Tommy. Yeah. His name is Thomas. Yes. I don't think his friends call him Thomas. But there as a server at a fucking big time steakhouse, your name is Thomas. Nope, backdoor Tommy. Yep. Got to lighten the mood up. Stop being such a fucking, everything's got to be so perfect. Let's get dressed up. Let's feel all fancy. Let's fuck later. Let's do some fun shit. Us, not us. <laughs> not us. I mean, you know, you're significant. Yeah, yeah. Not us. I'm not, no. Um, so anyway, we, it's our thing. We want to judge it based on everything that they have. Full nine service, the atmosphere, the look, the steaks, the food, the sides, the drinks, everything. And we're kind of. Whenever we go out, we really don't hold back on the alcohol either. Mm-hmm. Judge everything on how good they make a Jack and Diet. Yep. I don't even think I had one at Bourbon Steak. I didn't even have a Jack and Diet. I had one. It was in a cool tall glass. Oh, you did, yeah. yeah that was one too many. Yeah, it that was. was. That was the one. No, it wasn't really. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't think I finished it. <laughs> I think you did. You finished everything. Oh, no, I did, yeah. Because you drank my whiskey sour as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. So we go there and... Uh, um, we we're excited. It's supposed to be. It's really the this, the menu looked incredible, and uh, I have to say that overall, experience wise, fucking one of the best steakhouses. The the lady, the bar, the bartender, she made a fucking stellar old fashioned. One of the best old fashions at a restaurant I've had yet. Maybe my favorite. Probably the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really fucking good. Um, and then the appetizer, phenomenal. The seafood tower it was great. E- even like the the restaurant itself. Yeah. Like where we were sitting, like we were in the bar, but not in the bar. And then we had a view out the window. It was up high. It was up like 35 <laughs> Which floors. I do have to say, so Mike set the reservation up and he got a text message earlier that day. Yeah. Uh, everything, you know, yeah. Just everything. confirming, you know, uh, that you're coming in tonight and... You know, if you have any requests or anything or, you know, I don't think we can get you a window seat gets, you know, it just gets busy, yada, yada. And and we never do this. We never say anything, do anything. Because, like, who the fuck are we? Just a couple of jerk (laughs) But Mike's like, yeah, Seth Ferrosi's coming in, you know. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, he said Seth Rose, he's coming in. He's a steak connoisseur. Yeah, steak connoisseur. Really like my window seat. Yep, really likes window seats. Preferred. And like, and then he just, says at the end of it or some shit, he's like, we are very awesome. Yeah, yeah pretty special. i uh, sorry, just spit. Pretty special people coming in. Yeah, like fucking. Right. So like, he didn't get a text message back. Not that, and we, you know, we're just fucking around. Yeah. So we get in and. We got a fucking table at the window. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and we're like, okay, they read the fucking message, and and then we we asked our waitress, and she's like, yeah, she's like, we read the. We she's read. like, did the did the did the people at the front tell you you're awesome? And I was like, no, they didn't. She's like, they're supposed to. We we saw your messages. We're like, can you make sure you tell them to come, come back, back over? And tell us. Did they actually come back no. and tell you? <laughs> no, they Jesus. didn't. No, they just told us all to put masks on when we first walked in. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a bunch of shit. Yeah. I'm like, okay, just give me my fucking table. Yeah. But anyway, uh, it was the, the the waitress was really good. She yeah. was a fucking riot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so when we were there, we had phenomenal beginning. The steaks on there were top notch. Yeah. They had a rib cap on there, which you don't really see too often. You don't see a rib cap too much on a, on a menu. Uh, they had a 100 day dry aged, uh, what was it? 100 day dry aged bone and ribeye. Yep. That's what I got. I had to. Mm-hmm. 100 day. Funky motherfucker. Had some wild flavor on taste. it. It was great. I love. I love a good dry aged steak. Mm-hmm. So that really there, uh, that that steak rivaled my Jeff Ruby steak. Mm-hmm. My Jeff Ruby steak, the hundred or the fifty five day dry aged bone in New York strip at Jeff Ruby's was one of the funkiest, greatest steaks I've ever had. This one rivaled it. Yep. First time out of the fucking sixty steak houses that we've been to. That was the one that did it. But Jeff Ruby's also has the atmosphere, had the drinks, had the full nine. This fucking place had the same. We also met somebody at this spot. Bourbon Steak had a person there. They had a bourbon guy. Like a bourbon specialist. He's a bourbon specialist. That's his job. His name was Seth. Yep. When he came over, I told him we were going to fight first to see who gets to hold the name. He didn't know, like, how to take us. Yeah, yeah. Just at, yet. at first, he was really like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then he realized, I was like, hey, I can't understand you, and I'm a little drunk. Take the mask down. Yep. And he's like, okay, fuck it. Yeah. So then I was like, run us through, because they had a bottle of OFC up there, and George Dickel isn't far from there. The George Dickel Distillery isn't far from uh, Nashville, so that's like, their, that's like a big deal uh, down there. And it turns out they had some vintage bottles of George Dickel. They had a bottle from 1967. It was a bottle from 1967. In 1967, they put it in a gla- the glass decanter that it was. It was a golf club. Yeah. So it was a fucking sick, sick bottle. The whole nine, it was, a, it was vintage. And then he had another one. I think it was uh, Cascade. From, Cascade, yeah. Uh, I want to say sometime in the 60s as well. Yeah. I can't remember. But anyway, this motherfucker knew everything about bourbon. Mm-hmm. Fucking everything. We were asking him about the Buffalo Trace Distillery. We were asking him why OFC is so special. You name it, this dude knew it like offhand, like rattling off questions that I've had. Mm-hmm. It was fucking awesome. It's really cool. And then we ended up buying a bunch of stuff, getting even more kicked in the ass than we already were. Yep. It was so much fun. Yep. That was that was like the the crest for me. Yep. Because the people there were phenomenal. The service was impeccable. The drinks were phenomenal. The food was out of control. The steaks, I don't... Steaks were in my... I have to go back to Jeff Ruby's to judge the steak. Literally, the only difference from, I think, the steaks was like that crust that Jeff Ruby's does. They they had a crust, but the Jeff Ruby's crust is like a different... I get it. Yeah. I, I get it. You're right. That we judge the crust a lot. Mm-hmm. But the fucking funkiness of the steaks mm-hmm. is big for me. And they were all cooked perfectly. Yeah. No, oh, we had six fucking steaks. We got the uh the A five. The A five, yeah, in the middle. It was we got uh five ounces of that. Everybody could have a chunk. Yeah. And it was again fucking stupid good yeah maybe the most wild one bite of steak i've ever had i know like so like we were talking because they sell a5 by the ounce Mm -hmm. and it's usually like it was i think what they they said it was like 32 bucks an ounce Mm -hmm. so uh and and a minimum of four ounces right uh so 
on that, like, I'm like, who the fuck is going to buy like a four or five ounce steak? And I'm like, I never understood it. Mm -hmm. But then it kind of started making sense. Like, if you're not going to that type of restaurant to like get fucking uh, indulge yourself in everything and become a glutton, mm -hmm. on the menu as well, they had really high end caviar. And it's a unique thing. I also like oysters, good seafood platter. If I go just to have a nice meal with the, with the caviar, they like had a whole platter thing that you could add like high-end glasses of champagne. Hmm. I was like seafood, champagne, small steak, share a dessert. We're fucking. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the vibe I got. Like if I really wanted to go out and fucking lay some, lay some fucking serious pipe and not get a bellyache and all fucked up, I'm going to get a bottle of champagne have some oysters, light fare in the beginning, a small steak that's fire as fuck, yep. share a dessert, pound you in the back of the fucking truck. Yep. Yeah, make it real fucking exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. They had like two sides to the menu. Like even the desserts, like the sorbet. Oh, yeah. Perfect oh, perfect dessert to have, you know. And right not, before not, you go lay some pipe. Yeah. I know, go in there, go to, go to work hard. It's going to be expensive, but it's also a phenomenal experience. Yeah. That place fucks. Yes. It's... It, Pat's called it 1A and 1B, and I get it because it's like we have to go back to Jeff Ruby's yeah. and see. Bourbon steak is top two steakhouse. Yep. Top two. Easy. It was and, – And we all agreed. Yeah. You know, and we, we don't – like we, we're pretty like crucial about like being honest. Like there's been a few steakhouses where one or two of us are like, ah – didn't really I'm do big. much for me. And then the other one is like, oh, like it was maybe my favorite steak. Like Eddie V's, the experience Brandon gives you at Eddie V's is what sets it apart. Yeah. That motherfucker is the best server I've ever had yet. Yep. Yet. Period. Fucking phenomenal. Just feel like fucking royalty when you go there. Don't Brand's you agree? Awesome. Yep. Just awesome. Mm -hmm. But J Prime, like, I feel like that'd be a regular spot for me. Mm -hmm. Down in San Antonio. It's like, I'd be like, I'd be a regular there. Yeah. Fucking phenomenal. But then we had Steak 44, really special. Steak 48. 48. Oh, 48. 44, yeah. I don't know why. I just like the number. Steak 48 in Houston, phenomenal place. That that one out of most sticks out to me. I know. Yeah. I just, I love that spot, the atmosphere. And at like, Abraham, yeah. the server. Great server. He was the man. He really was. And the Coke bottles. Yeah, like the whole... See, that Diet donut Coke tree. Glass they, it was cool because the Jack and Diet that they came and served, they had these fucking sick, heavy glasses. Mm -hmm. They br brought it over on the tray. It was what? It was, all, it was us four. Mm -hmm. Zach, you, Bob, and myself. Mm -hmm. We go. They brought him out. They had the, a heavy pour of Jack <clears> in there, and then they had little mini, like, six-ounce glass bottles of Diet Coke that they made for you at the table. Yeah. Like, nice touch. That place was pretty cool, too. Fuck like, yeah. Oh, Great, great, great atmosphere. Yeah. Great look. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I oh, know. I'd still say. I mean, I didn't obviously didn't go there, but Eddie V's, Steak Forty Eight, Jeff Ruby's. Yeah. Not in that order, but yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So that's in your top five, bourbon With, steak. Bourbon steaks top two. Top two. What's uh, it beat I, out? Huh? What's it beat out? Like everything. Everything. Like, what's your top two then? Jeff Ruby's in Columbus and uh, and bourbon steak in wow. Nashville. Yeah, oh, those shit. are top two. I, I, now, now again, like, I can't, I'm not shitting on anything else. Oh, yeah, I'm saying can. the overall experience that I received, yeah. hands down fucking insane. Mm -hmm. But I did really like STK in Vegas. Yep. STK in Vegas is fucking stupid great. Um, the place in, uh, what was that place in the Wynn that we went to? Mm. With the show? What was that? Steak, uh, no. God damn. Had the fucking water show. Yeah, I know. Like that, you know what? That fucking atmosphere is up there because I love drinking and eating seafood and looking at the show. It was I, a lot of fun. I don't remember it's called that. SW Steakhouse? SW. I don't remember that. That place one. is fucking sick. If you, go to, if you go to Vegas, go to SW and get the fucking seat in front of the water show. Yeah. I love <laughs> Vegas. Man, so much fun. Yeah. I think you were pretty ripped up that day. Yeah, I don't remember much. <laughs> I was like, I was there. Yeah, you were fucking. You ripped up a few times. I didn't talk much at that at di that dinner. No, uh, 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 I was all excited. Yeah, I was fucked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should, huh? <laughs> Man, I, so Stop, here's fuck. I can't even like picture where we sat. So it's so cool because like the uh, like Nashville. 
Uh, Broadway Street was a shit show, but the, the amount of pe- the, all the people, fucking cool as hell. Yeah. Steakhouses was great. Maybe it's just the D-Gens on Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking That's D-Gens. I, I, like five years ago, like that guy, I didn't know that that guy said that. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he lives somewhere else now. He used to live in Nashville. And then he's like, he's like, he said 10 years ago, he's like, you wouldn't even... Have, like it's completely that's probably, different. That's probably what I think. Like I'm doing the boomer thing and bitching, but it's probably that. Mm-hmm. You know, ten years ago I'd been like, yeah, like let's go listen to some fucking country music, sit down, kick the feet up, that yeah. whole scenario, have a fucking good drink at a small bar. Yeah, you know well, what I mean. Well, yeah, and I think we, we didn't really explore anything other than an hour out on Broadway. No, that really it really fucked me. You up. You know, because uh, the restaurant and bar at our at our hotel was really nice. Oh yeah, it was, you know, and I think if we would have went like across the street to that other hotel, they had like a nice bar there. Like, I think there's nice spots. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. We just went right to the, yeah, but it's just the, 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 like, Oh, there was fucking, there were people passed out everywhere. Mm -hmm. It like, I feel like I had to Clorox my shoes. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah, I kicked mine off before I went in the house yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, I'm not walking through my house with them fucking things. Mm-mm. But lots of fun. I had a blast. Yeah, it was good to get away. I like seeing people. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. I really don't give a fuck about the nightlife or anything like that. I can fuck off. I want to meet the people. I want to hear stories. And I want to eat good food. Yep. It's like really what I like to do. Mm-hmm. Pretty much all I like to do. It's like, do a good job. Enjoy it. <laughs> I don't want to do a bunch of shit that will just fuck my life up. Been there. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the, what's the point of that? Like, just do a good job. Yeah, give me that, give me that fucking shitty feeling. Uh, like, oh, uh, no. No, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I'm getting, maybe I'm getting older, softer, no more. I, getting I mean, older. I don't want to do those things. I don't. I just want to do cool shit, get tanked up with the people that I really like and doing things. I don't want to go to a bar and uh, there's there's just too many people that uh, like. Jeez. What is this? Sh- the woo girls were out of control. Woo girls. Yeah. It was a real thing. Uh-huh. I didn't know that's what they were called. Yeah. Woohoo and yeah. shit. Fuck. It was a cool car show or car meet. Oh, the, the Crown Rally. Crown Rally. That was unique. Bunch of sick rides. I, I walked out front. I'm like, man, I'm like, right day, right time. Crazy. Yeah. Supercars. Yeah. But other than that, Shaner, how'd you do? How was the weekend? What'd you do? Weekend was good. Um, I really didn't do much. I just hung out. But uh, I got a good gift from um, Lex's mom yesterday. Huh? She got me my late birthday gift. She got me a uh, to make smoked old fashions. Yep. Shame. It's awesome. Man. It's fucking awesome. So that what is you a do, fire gift. Yeah, what you do is you put the fucking it's it comes in like this container uh-huh. with a funnel and you put the funnel on top of the glass. Uh-huh. Put it comes with wood chips, so you put the wood chips in there. Put a strainer, torch it, and then cover it. And it's fucking yeah. great. Yeah. Yep. Did you use it this weekend? I need uh, butane. She didn't know it didn't come with butane, so I needed to order it. Yep. Yep. So, they yeah. have some at the store as well. We we do. Oh fuck oh. yeah! You can get butane. In oh no, I thought I thought you meant we did. I was like, no. Oh okay. Don't. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you, I just ordered on Amazon. Oh, I don't okay. feel like going to Walmart. Yeah, good call. Fuck that place. Yeah, so I'll get it Thursday. I'll be able to use. What kind it. of what kind of bourbon you got for it? Well, uh, basil Hayden. Okay, good. Do you have yep. uh, what, do you, what, did, what cherries? Do you got cherries? Yep, maraschino cherries. I need to get orange. An orange. Get an orange. And then I have get the bitters. bitters. Yep, mm. I do. I have everything. I, I was literally telling. Lex do you have an yesterday. ice cube? Do you have the sugar? Cube? Oh, I need to make those too. Yeah. No. Do you have like a? You have like a thing to make the big cubes? I don't. No. Take, take one from the freezer. Yeah, we got some in the freezer. Uh, do you have sugar cubes? No, cubes not actually sugar. sugar. You got to get cubes. You got to get cube. Oh, you gotta get fuck. Sugar cubes. Go get the yeah, do- a box have, of Domino cube sugar. They have it right up at the Murraysville and Giant Eagle in Murraysville. Mm-hmm. They have them there. That's where I got mine. Um, yeah. The good, the good cherries, too. I think I might have a can at home. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're mm-hmm. my favorite. Yeah. I love old fashioned. I love smoked old fashions. Basil Hayden's, Elijah Craig, uh, Blanton's. Uh, Blanton's is my favorite. I like a Blanton's old fashioned. Mm-hmm. They did it with Willet. Yeah. Willet old fashioned. That's what they had there at Bourbon Steak. It was, it was a tasty old fashioned. It's really good. Yeah. 
I didn't like how she was making them because I could see her making them. Yeah. At the at the restaurant, I was a little. I was like, ah, I don't know if I'd make it that way. But then, like, whenever the way she finished, I was like, yeah, you're a professional. I need to shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And then I taste it, and I was like, yeah, it's really good. Fucking fire. <laughs> Heavy pour. Yeah, they kept getting stronger. They did. Yeah. I think they realized we were quarter degenerates. Yeah. And then they started feeding into it all. Yeah, they're like, these guys. Oh, they, oh, they brought out a special uh, treat for us, too. They brought out French fries. Oh, shit. Three different flavored uh, French fries with three different sauces. Like pairing paired sauces? Them. Oh, man. Listen. These were the best fucking French fries I've ever eaten in my life. Yep. They were fucking phenomenal. One was a Parmesan truffle. Yep. One was... Like a, uh, some type of spicy dill dusted thing. Yep. Really good. The other one was like a... More of like a... Kind of like a Cajun type... A like Cajun taste. ranch or some shit? Yeah, a Cajun ranch maybe. I don't know. It was, they were all like... They all like had this a look to them. They were dusted. They were pre presented very well with their paired sauce... I was in it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah. I love food so much. Me too. So my problem is that I like it a little too much and I got fat. So now, uh, because, put it this way, I'm nonstop at home with the kids, with work. It's been so intense. We've had release after release after release. Mm -hmm. It's been nonstop. And I did not take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I put everything there and I started, I just didn't feel good. Yeah. So I realized that me not doing my cardio regularly, me not ha taking the time to prepare all my meals all the time, like it put me in a bad spot and I gained a little bit of thickness. Yeah. Like not so much good thickness because I'm lifting weights and I'm stronger and my arm's good and it's growing and all this, but there's this layer of shit around my stomach that I really fucking hate. Hmm. So I got to change that. So I'm going to eat really clean during all during the week. Get back to my five-day-a-week schedule. Saturday, do something nice food-wise. Sunday, have a nice big meal with the family, mm -hmm. and that's it. Big snack on Saturday with the kids because that's always a thing that we do in the house that I enjoy. And then nice meal, big family meal on Sunday. Mm. But still do my cardio and workout, and then during the week, cleaner to motherfucker. Make sure everything's there. Yeah. Take care of myself because I notice if I don't take care of myself, I become a little bit of a fuck-off. Mm. Like I fuck up a lot. I make bad decisions, become a little impulsive, feel, feel a little angry. Yeah, just feeling the bad about yourself. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, like because I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a common thing that occurs, but uh, with as intense as things have been around here, uh, I think that um, I need to get my shit together. Clean it up. And it was also inspiring to meet so many people over the weekend that, mm -hmm. uh, like, they do that. They yeah. did that. And I mean, I, you know, the yo-yo effect of up, down, this, that. But um, uh, talking to everybody, it's inspiring to hear their stories because they aren't Instagram sensations. Mm -hmm. They aren't YouTube fucking phenoms. They're just regular motherfuckers making their life better that have put in the time and effort. And it's so awesome to hear. Yep. Fucking it's like hearing people that like just how wake up and do your cardio. Like right now I wake up. My time is with SJ. Mm -hmm. Every morning at 5 a.m. the fucking kid wakes up. We spend at least an we spend an hour together every morning, five to six, mm -hmm. and then at six that's whenever I start. I start myself. I get a shower. I get ready, and then I get Adeline to school, and then I come here and I work out. <clears throat> but like that time is usually when I did my cardio. So now that's why I'm taking Adeline to school and working out in the morning. Yeah, that's the process that's that's changing. But that time with him, I've been taking that time with him since he was born. Mm -hmm. At five a.m. is our thing. Yep. You know, I put him in the hamper when I take a shit. <laughs> so <laughs> we wake up i feed him a bub and he's wide awake fucking kicking loving life waking up and uh and then i'm like okay i get my cup of coffee and then he sits there and just he just hangs out he doesn't really scream he just hangs out yeah so he just hangs out does his thing drools all over himself bites the fucking toy this that i drink my coffee and then i have to take my morning shit mm -hmm. and he's soon after me yeah. so then i take my morning shit but then it's like i just put him in like the clothes, the clothes basket that we have mm -hmm. with like clothes in it. I put him in that. I prop him up and he sits in the bathroom while I take a dump. He sits there. We talk. We hang out. And then I'm done. And he usually takes a shit shortly thereafter. Yep. And I clean him up. And then if he doesn't take his shit, he shits for Hannah right when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> 
perfect timing. That's usually 90% of it. Yeah. Usually shit's for me every now and then. I'm like, oh, we shit together. And then she's like, no, you don't. It's, I'm cleaning it up all the time, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I love it. No, it's uh, – but um, – Big thing is, is people that are in the same situation that get overwhelmed at times or, or right now that are like me, that are just like, fuck, dude, feel like shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's okay because the weights and the cardio will always be there. Mm-hmm. They're always going to be there. Guess what? Stepper's in the same place that I left it. The weights are in the same, same place they were before I hurt my fucking tricep. Mm-hmm. They're always going to be there. You just have to go fucking do it. So my thing is now, all I have to do is make the time to do it. I just have to schedule the time to do it. Prepare my fucking meals. Also, I was debating about looking into like a food service. What do you think? I think uh, I think if we find the right one, it would be really nice. I think I'm going to order a few different ones today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mega Fit Meals didn't do too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay Cutler's not with him. I like the Jay Cutler meal. Yeah, he's with Trifecta. I don't know how trifecta is. Never had it. I'm thinking of ordering some of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Clean Eats is good. We have Clean Eats at the store. Mm -hmm. I like those. Mm -hmm. But um, I need to find some type of service that is accommodating for me on a regular basis, like a couple meals a day. Yeah, just a a few. Like if it can fill like one or two meals a day. (laughs) Well, there's five people in my house right now. It's very intense with a newborn. Gymnastics is fucking... Balls to the walls, intense. So our lives are very, very crazy and intense. And I'm like, gonna, I need to, I need to take the steps to balance it all out. Mm-hmm. Because fortunately, you know, finances aren't an issue. It's more of quality, uh, consistency, and 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 just finding the right shit to put into my life. Mm-hmm. So I want to find the right meal service that can do that. Yeah. I don't quite know who it's going to be, so I'm going to order a couple of them. Do you have any suggestions over there, Shaner? I don't. I actually don't know much about. I didn't know if you knew because you know the internet better than anybody in the world, so Mm -hmm. I figured I'd ask you. I just know clean eats from the store. That's it. What was that one I said the other day? Uh, Nutrition solutions. Yeah, I want to try. I want to try something from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm going to give. I'm going to give Trifecta a a whirl. You see a lot of people using them, but. I don't know how they are. You never know. Some people just promote things just to promote it because they're getting paid. Yeah. I'd like to find the one that's actually good, that's good for me, for me to talk about. Because if it's not, I won't take it. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, tons of emails right now. Really? Yeah. About what? Like trying to sell me stuff or telling me to pay stuff. Shipping notifications for things I ordered. What'd you order? I order something at least every few days. Really? Yeah, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> well, so, like some home essentials I order on the line. Oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, my sauces I like and... Oh, uh, you're just like, fuck it, yeah. Fuck you're it, dude. Good call. yeah. Lavish I mean, breads. I love lavish breads. You order your lavish bread online? Fuck yeah. <laughs> like, Amazon. Amazon, that yeah. shit. Ordered some, ordered some stuff for the race. How well do the fucking delivery people know you? Oh my god, they, the it's funny the UPS guys that come. It's two guys that come on my route, like together, like they drive together. I don't Nougat. know if they're like training, maybe for sure. But they're two younger dudes, and like they love seeing my cars. Like if uh-huh. I'm if I'm getting home when they're dropping off, like I got to talk to them for a few minutes about them. Nice. But like they. Uh, I think because of where I'm at, I am literally everyone's last fucking stop. For sure. So, like, I've seen FedEx. The FedEx guy, he he comes in a budget truck because he does all the miscellaneous deliveries in the country. Yeah. He'll. I've seen him back down my driveway at 9 o'clock at night. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so, yeah, I know them yeah, all very well. he's backing down the driveway. Backing down a budget truck Man, the whole driveway. That guy can fucking yeah. drive a vehicle, I tell you what. Yep. He's like, I don't like fucking when people shit up. He's like, I hate turning around where it's dark. and. So uh, you can get him a Christmas gift? I probably should. I think you should. Like, I mean, maybe it's a at fucking a gift. hike. Yeah, it's, it's a hike, and yeah. they're doing a lot for you. And even though you do pay shipping and stuff, and they do have a job, but it's I think yeah. it'd be a nice touch. No, I think so, too. Yeah. I don't know what I'd get him, though. Maybe a gift card? Yeah. You should get him decals for his budget truck. 
No bad idea. He, he probably can't put them on there. Or uh, a new I truck. think um, <laughs> buy him a his own FedEx truck. <laughs> Here's a FedEx truck. <laughs> fucking dickhead has a backup camera on it yeah look at this like i'll give him the backup camera for yeah it. no i'd like, probably dude. say uh i you know what you know what are always nice i don't know how many people do this but my mom used to whenever she was uh whenever we were all kids uh she did uh chocolate covered peanut peanut butter balls mm. she'd give them as like gift she'd do like uh eight packs yeah like, put eight in a box freeze it and then like give, give them away to people it was a really nice gift and kim's a baker you know what? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my mom's peanut butter ball recipe mm. and give it to Kim. Yeah, she she she'll throw down it. with yeah, it. Yeah, she would. Mm. My mom my mom doesn't really make them because it's a lot of work and she's got arthritis and shit now. Yeah, she's fucking furious right now. By the way, what happened? She can't get pumpkin. Pumpkin canned pumpkin. Yeah, she can't get it. Really? Yeah, it's it's like a pumpkin shortage. My mom usually makes like a dozen pumpkin rolls every year. Yeah, she can't get them. She is fucking pissed. I'll ask Kim. She just made pumpkin cookies over the weekend. Oh, yeah. Like she, can, canned pumpkin. Yeah. She had it. Yeah. If anybody can get canned pumpkin out there, please send it to me so my mom can make yeah. pumpkin rolls and I can become a good son. We need like a pallet of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like legitimately, I'll take as many, like a couple cases. Like four or 500 pounds of pumpkin. Not that much. Not, not that much. Jesus Christ, Maybe Bob. Like, you got to be careful. These people might do that. Maybe a few large cans. I, like no, big... cases. I'd like a couple cases, and yeah. my mom would be all excited. Mm -hmm. You send them to me, I'll send you one of my mom's pumpkin roll. Mm. You give me a couple cases of pumpkin, you get my mom's pumpkin roll. I'll sign it. I'll stamp my dick on top of it and everything. <laughs> I'll touch it. Put my dick in it. Boop, boop. <laughs> Put my pubes in it. <laughs> Seth's pumpkin roll. Jesus. So uh, there, there was a couple people that were talking about the OnlyFans sites this weekend. <laughs> like, I think you should do it. And I'm like, dude, I was like, if I would do an OnlyFans, I would fucking be a complete jerk off. Mm -hmm. There is a, t a ton of people doing OnlyFans, by the way. Yeah. I didn't know. Like, it's gotten way fucking bigger than whenever we first started joking around about it. Yeah. Got well, a hand. Remember, I was listening to that video. This, this girl is like putting herself through college. Oh yeah, she's making. What was it? What was it? Fifty grand a month. Fifty grand a month. Like she's in college, like going to these stores, buying like high designer handbags, all this shit, paying cash for her tuition. Fifty grand a month. Yeah. Doing only fans. Holy shit. Oh, that's six hundred k a fucking year. Yeah. That's out of control. Oh yeah, and then like it was some like she didn't put like a whole lot of time into it. It came out to like she was making like eleven $1 hundred dollars an hour. What? Yeah. <sighs> Boy, is that fucking rough. So like fifty hours a month. Fifty hours a month. Fifty, fifty five hours a month. Making fucking fifty K. Man, she must be fucking Must be good. Throw that something. pussy up in the air, it turns into sunshine. <laughs> I heard, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I heard about that. It smells like a spring fucking field done down there. <laughs> My God. <sighs> God damn it. Fuck. Only fans. Very lucrative. I can't believe it. Those fuckers, <laughs> they stole money from my card. <laughs> How about his credit card got stolen by only fan, by Pearson and they spent OnlyFans money? Yeah, they dropped like three hundred and some bucks on subscriptions. No shit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> card I haven't used in six fucking months. Oh my haven't God. used your card in six months. All uh -huh. of a sudden, you get charges to it, and it's OnlyFans. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like OnlyFans. I'm like, this is gonna look so bad. I was like, <laughs> like, hey Kim, did you use the card for anything? <laughs> Well, no, I was like, I was like, hey, I was like, my fucking card got hacked. And she's like, oh, for what? I was like, like 300 and some bucks, like to OnlyFans. And she's like, oh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, I called her. I was like, hey, I was like, did you use the fucking card? I'm like, I only have the card. Like, you must have taken the fucking card and put it in. And she's like, no, dickhead. I was fucking kidding. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't do these charges. It's not me. I was like, well, I was kind of excited that you did that. I, and, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm. Um, I really don't want to put my credit card information into OnlyFans. I don't know if I I don't trust it, but apparently, if people are making millions of fucking dollars, I should trust it. It probably is a a, a well-controlled site. But I'm curious what's on this fucking thing. 
Like, what's going on on there? Like, there has to be a ton of people that are that are into this, like that are buying it. It's nudity. It's just getting naked and and being personal in like messages and shit. What's gonna happen whenever nobody has a fucking skill in the world except like, like, like fake re- fake relationships? Yeah, like fake fulfillment. Yeah, what's gonna happen? It's like a giant Manti Teo platform. Remember that oh, fucking guy? Man. Yeah. He had a boyfriend. Actually, it was his girlfriend, but a, girlfriend. a guy acting like a girl. He was yeah. a big fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was weird. Didn't meet him for three fucking years. That was just... What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, I'm getting my dick sucked within the first month. <laughs> 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 but if you give me the uh, company card today, I'll find out what's on OnlyFans. I'm not giving you the company card for OnlyFans. Well, you might as well I- use my... my, Amer- my uh, American right. Airlines card. Fucking general have our asses. No, she She'll won't She'll be care. like, what the fuck? She won't even know what it is. Listen. Marketing. Put it under marketing. It's marketing. Chino will be like, hey, guys. <laughs> Digital marketing. <laughs> we had to see what we were getting ourselves yeah, into. Yeah, research. Be research. Adver- there's advertising platforms on OnlyFans, and we want to take advantage of it. It was research. Can you then. imagine an action sledge ad popping up on OnlyFans? Fuck yeah, dude. I'm, I'd put it on there. That'd manpower. Be one place, yeah, manpower. <laughs> Big dick. <laughs> Your dick will get bigger if you take manpower. I'll lie about everything. <laughs> Fuck, everybody else does. <laughs> this pill will make your dick bigger. No, it fucking won't. Listen, I have pulled on this thing, tied weights to it. I have done terrible things, and nothing has made this bigger. Your pill isn't going to work. Or you could just go get some fucking injections. Yeah, get dick, some dick injections. injections. 57 erections from one injection. I thought it was 66. I didn't know what it was. Or 56. 56. Something like that. 56 erections guaranteed. Like, what, what the fuck is going on? I'm counting them. I'm going to. I mean, I'm if paying I, uh, this kind of money and you're jabbing my dick, I want to see what kind of erections I get. Where do they put it? So that's a big thing in Vegas. Dick injections. Dick, no, oh. Yeah, the injections. Huh. They give, like, people that just take too They, You know, people, people love fucking taking gear, dick pills. Cocaine, drugs. So the dick injections are like a thing. And apparently it keeps it like at a fucking, like more of a half chub rather than just like a normal fucking mm-hmm. little dangly pee pee. Half chub. All the time. All the time. Mm. And then like hard, hard erections. But like anything, I think that like you're going to have to stop getting a dick injection at some point, bud. Like I'd be like, yeah, dick injection one time. Let's see it, this and that. And then you get addicted to the fucking half chub all the time where everybody's like, bro, dick, huge dick, huge dick. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Does it hurt? I'd imagine it's a fucking needle going into your pecker. Like a growth, like a growth pen? Like an insulin pen? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'd think so. I would hope so. I'm not sticking a fucking 22 gauge? No fucking way. Or 23 gauge? I'm going to stick a 25 gauge in my pecker. No way. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And where do you go? I'd probably the say shaft? it's probably at like the, the dick root. Oh. Like right there. Oh, okay. I think so. Not into like. Not into the people. Oh. I didn't know if they, these were going like, it was like a sight injection, like right into the head. Oh, oh no, Jesus Or right Christ. into the side. Jesus, Bob. I didn't know. I hope that's, not. That's now, literally now what I'm I, questioning my abilities of what I thought a dick injection was. Did you ever ask where it was? Where they put them? No, I am not getting anything injected into my penis. Do you mean to look it up? Yeah. All right. So like, uh, like, a, <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, it's okay. <laughs> this is research. Dick injections. No. Penis enlargement, dermal. What to know about? No, those. No. Now there's them things where people are fucking sticking. Oh. What's it? They do the. Uh, the this next, is um, the next big thing. The next big thing. Fuck off. <laughs> Here. Uh, they stick. Look at under that though. Look what it says. In a nutshell, it's a Kylie makeover for your dick. Jesus. <laughs> no, they do these. Uh, they do like a filler where it makes it fucking bigger, like uh, like synthol. Oh, like the oil. See, like, yeah. Did you ever see the people like? Uh, you never got a text from somebody about this dude having like a, not not the black dude with the fucking huge real dick. Mm-hmm. People use these things that's like it's just it like just makes it look bigger. Makes it look bigger, but like really fucked up looking. Hmm. Yeah, I never seen that. Yeah, I seen it. There you go. I seen it. There's the steps. Where's it at? Grasp the head of your penis, not the skin. Locate the area to be injected, middle third of your penis. 
Jesus, now we're cutting this thing into thirds? It's not that goddamn big to begin with here. Uh, remove the cap covering of the needle. Hold the syringe between your thumb, your index, and middle finger like a pen or a dart. <laughs> Once again, grasp the head of your penis and pull it straight out. All right, everybody, come on. Pull it straight out. More items. Moving on, Shane. Oh, fuck, where'd that go? Uh, prepare, uh, uh, oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Let's get some fucking Oh, vision. there's a diagram. <gasps> Hold, you are. I knew it, dude. Middle of the fucking penis. Yep. Right in the side of the fucking dick. Show everybody, Shane. Yep. You guys got to see this. Holy shit. Right in the side of your cock. Oh, here's it. Here are the steps. Here they are. There it is. Uh, um, touch the needle with the skin. Quickly slide it into the shaft of your penis. <laughs> Remember to avoid any veins. Okay. Yeah, make what if sure, you hit the center vein? Make sure to insert the needle at uh, at a slight angle, <laughs> either the ten o'clock or two o'clock position, <laughs> depending which way you're like. Oh, if you're on the right okay. side or the left side, which depending on which hand you use. Yeah, right. Um, move your finger to the index finger to the thumb to push the plunger. Quickly push down on the plunger to inject the medication into the shaft of your penis. Be careful not to pull the syringe out. As you're injecting the medication. Oh, so you don't fucking squirt it everywhere. Uh, once you have injected all of the medication, quickly pull the needle out of your penis. <laughs> if you pull it straight out. Do not twisting or jerking motion because it may cause bruising. Ah, I don't want to bruise dick. No. Apply pressure to the injection site for two to three minutes with your thumb on the injection site or your index finger on the opposite side of your penis. You know, kind of squeeze it. You know, then we get like a, like a squeeze. Um... Where was I? If you're taking a blood thinner or aspirin, hold pressure for at least five minutes. This will help decrease any bleeding or bruising. Place the syringe in a sharps container. You do not need to recap it. Recap the fucking syringe. Yeah, you asshole. Fucking, what am I going to do? Throw it in the... Sh yeah. Who's... Oh, I'm taking a fucking dick injection. Let me put it in my sharps container at home. Yeah. There, there's the erection scale. It's said to... Uh it usually takes a few injections to find the right dose for an erection firm enough to have sex. Mm. So there's a little bit of trial and error oh, with no. this. So we're saying this is somebody that is impotent. They, they cannot, they have erectile dysfunction. They can't get Oh, uh, they actually need this. They actually need it because it usually takes a few injections to find the right dose for an erection firm enough to have sex. Therefore, like this is for people that don't, they can't get hard ons. But then people would find out about it that they, just like them. It's important that you follow the treatment plan that your APP gave you. Don't adjust your own dosing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, let's see. My erection was a blank on a scale of 0 to 10. Oh, okay. My erection lasted blank minutes or hours until it became a 5 on the erection scale. Did you show everybody the erection scale, Shane? Yeah. Screenshotted it. Good, good, good. Man. So. Wow. So if a normal person. Who was like, hey, I have this formula. I think if I shoot this into the side of my penis, it's going to work. Let's try it out. Listen, I think for people that are impotent, like older gentlemen or people that have problems, like real actual erectile dysfunction, because that is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you don't get your dick hard, bro, it fucks with you. It's a big thing. So I think that people do need these things. However, whenever people find out about it, they're like, so like, I just get like crazy hard ons all the time. Yes, dude, you don't need a fucking dick injection though. But then they get them and then they like them. Half chub all day long. Half cocked. Half cocked all day long. <laughs> Fucking good dick day every day. Because that's part of the thing. Like a good dick day. You wake up with a serious chub, put your pants on, show on the old lady, be like, fuck yeah, I am fucking, I'm the shit right now. She's like, it's okay. <laughs> fuck you. Look at the crank on that guy. <laughs> Don't ask me what your fucking hair looks like ever again. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Now is good times. Dick injections. They're a thing. Yeah. We got offered them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I refused. I declined. I didn't want to. I don't want that. I definitely would have thought it was going to be dick in the root. root. No, not right in the side. Imagine grabbing the tip of your dick. Ow! Oh. I'm scared to come at it with like a clipper or like a buzzer. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if my if if 
If my penis didn't get hard, I'd definitely shove some shit in there, though. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, let's fix this fucking problem. Yeah. Let's go. Yep. No worries. So if anybody out there does have a penis problem, dick injections. Or you just want half a chub all day. Or half a chub all day and then fucking uncontrollable fucking crazy hard-ons probably. Mm-hmm. Do you imagine the fucking hard-ons you get from that shit? Probably intense. Yeah. I don't want that. I'd be a little scared. I know. Maybe not. Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Shaner, in the world of sports, your UFC had quite the weekend. Yeah. Craziest knockout in UFC history. Yeah, that was crazy. One of them. It was nuts. Yeah, that was insane. I think it was pretty crazy that uh, it was good for the sport Mm -hmm. and for ratings because what that did was uh, everybody that wants to see all the big-time fights and doesn't buy the smaller cards like this weekend was. Yep. Was it was it on a card? Did you have to yeah. buy it? No, you didn't have to. It's fight oh, night. You didn't have to buy it. It was a fight night. Yeah. So the fact that it was there probably drove ratings up, being like, "Hey, fights are on. You missed a crazy knockout. People are yeah. gonna be like, fuck yeah, I want to see this shit live now.'" Yeah, and that was it. Was a good main event too, uh, Marais versus uh, Sandhagen. Yeah. So, but I mean, that knockout was nuts. Knockout was crazy. Yeah. Second second UFC fight for Impa. Welcome to the show. Yeah. He had good. Uh, I think after the fight too, he like told Buckley like great fight. Like, what are you gonna? Yeah. What What are you? You are like I hate in this sport. Like it's hard to talk shit on these people because they are fighting. Mm-hmm. Like they're not playing. They're not playing a game. Mm-mm. It's not like a physical football game. Yeah. It's not like a physical basketball game. It's not like a fucking hockey game. No, I'm legitimately trying to kill you. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. If I somehow, like, just catch you in the nose just right and uppercut you right in the fucking nose and knock you out cold, like, I'm sorry, but I'm not. Like, holy fuck is that nuts. So it's hard to, like, talk shit on those people. Yeah, and it's not a team. It's – it's you're literally 1v1. And it's it's luck, but it's not. It's all skill. I think that it's – uh I think it's – there's so many other indicating factors that come into play because fighting is intense. Yeah. Uh, you know, making weight – uh, how your belly feels, how you're moving, just overall well-being of your mental stat, m- mental st- status, mm-hmm. like your your home life, your kids, your girlfriend, is she fucking somebody else? Yep. Or you guys just got over a big fight? Like, did she support you your whole entire prep? All these different things. Like, there's a lot of stuff that goes into her men- mentally that, like, bro, can fuck with you, especially if you have something, if it's already like a neck and neck fight. Okay, neck and neck. And then, like, this guy is having the fucking best camp the best everything possible and then this guy just falling behind on a couple things or having a fight with his trainer or anything like it that could be like an indicating factor in any way yeah mm-hmm. i'm and also it might be fuel i don't know i'm not a fighter oh yeah. yeah yeah i'm excited for this coming weekend though who's that uh brian ortega versus korean zombie finally it's It'll gonna be, be a great fight a little scary fight yeah i'm taking ortega really sure yeah yeah i like brian ortega Everybody's probably like, nope, don't do it. Did you win any money this weekend? I didn't. Gamble? I didn't bet. No, you didn't bet any money. No, I liked the card, but I didn't at the same time, and I didn't want to just bet on one fight. What about football? Did you bet any on any football? Um, no, I just took the Steelers in our poll. That was a close one. Holy shit! Yeah, I was way closer than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Chiefs lost. That was crazy. To the Raiders. They lost. They lost to the Raiders. How about Dak? Yeah, that's. You they better that? pay his ass. I know, dude. They better pay him. That's what. That's the shit that happens. That was the worst looking break I've seen. That was. A, that was a that. That right there. <sighs> Fully collapsed. That yep. right there was the type of shit that Joe Theismann got from Lawrence Taylor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about Joe Theismann? Fucking. It was. He snapped. Yep. Snapped his leg. Ended his career. Because I mean, he can come back from this, but he's never going to be the fucking same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about Alex Smith this weekend too? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. He came back. He came back from a fucking Joe Thigh. Brutal as well. Two yeah. years. Right? Seventeen yeah. surgeries. Yeah. Oh, Almost shit. got his leg amputated. Yeah. He's out there playing football now. Yeah. Third string or second, second or third string now. Yeah, he's second now. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that break was rough. It was bad. Well, I the the first video I saw the slow mo angle, I thought I saw it because of like the way he planted. I'm like, oh, and then I didn't see like the next step. It got like swept in by 
uh, who was hitting him and just went like his his leg flattened to the <clears throat> ground and his shoe kicked out. I was I like, what, oh my god! Like you know, like they're gonna show like it. Wonder, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a doctor, but like the. The break of it, did it, like, was it, like, the green stick breaks that they say, like, were just, like, kind of, like, like a green stick, like, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a green, yeah, like a green tree or green yeah, stick. Yeah, like it cracks. It cracks and then that. But this, like, yeah. did it shatter? Like, are there pieces that broke off? Like, what type of break was yeah. it? Like, it was and nuts. tearing muscles and tearing. Oh, it's a oh, fucking dude. nightmare. They yeah. said he went under surgery last night. Yeah. Immediate. They had to be fucking terrible. It was really bad. He to probably do, had some serious damage going on To in there. do immediate surgery. Yeah, bro. That's such a, that's such like a like the look on his face, like leaving the field. Like that's such a fucking crazy feeling and emotion to see. Bro, you know what happened. Yeah, you lost it all. And like the all the players, even the Giants lined up. Like oh, they're bro. all just like there's, fuck, there's, dude. It don't matter if you're a fucking piece of shit. No. Nope. If you're even if you're a piece of shit, yeah, I don't want to see that happen. Mm -mm. No. You know what I mean? Like nobody wants to see like a career ending. Especially when you're a talented individual like him, oh, crazy like, season. That's what I mean. Like you're, you don't, you don't ever want to see anything like that. I don't want to see that shit. That's horrible. Like I don't care what, what you could, work, how you could feel about somebody. Take away their way of making money and 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 being the best that they could have been. Yeah. Fuck it, that's horrible. Yeah, he had the most stressful off season too with his brother not getting his money. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it was. So intense. like, there's a lot of. Shit. I think I think that I think that the fans are like. I think they're on his side. They're like, fuck, this, sure. is, this is what the sport's about. And, you know, there's, you know, there's way more unfortunate people in the world, but it's, uh, it's, it's hard to see whenever you see somebody invest everything that they are and everything that they have in their life into something and then that happen. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. That's rough. That'll fuck with you as a person individually. Mm -hmm. Like, think about it. Like, we're like, oh, he's got millions of dollars, this and that, and he's fine and everything's great, this and that, but he's never going to live to his full potential. And he's going to have to come back from something pretty intense, which I think that he can, you know, with the right with the right supervision and everything. Mm -hmm. But mentally, what it'll do to you and your significant other, your home life, all of that, because I know what this fucking thing did to me. Yeah. Like, this was just a tear. This is I'm fucking back lifting weights again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 20 weeks later, I'm fucking hard into it. Yeah. That, it's not so much like that. Mm -hmm. People that are killing, that tear their Achilles tendon. That's not quite just a, hey, we're out for 16 weeks. No, it's... No, it's fucking... It's going to be a year. It's Dude, long. Kevin Durant was out. Same injury. That, that's that's what I mean. Like, what yeah. it, we see superficially people, but we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Exactly. Yeah. And behind closed doors can be a little rough sometimes, and you want to make sure that you do the right thing, because I know this thing fucked me up, did some impulsive shit, fucked with my home life a little bit. I wasn't the person that I should be. I became a little bit of a different person because I engulfed myself in things that kept my mind occupied. Mm -hmm. Like lifting weights was always my thing. Take lifting weights away. I was good for a little bit. All of a sudden, I'm not good. Dive into work harder. Become a little bit more uh, closed off from my home life. Mm -hmm. Whenever you become closed off from your home life and still think you're the same person, that's not gonna be, it's not a fucking good thing. So seeing these types of injuries, it's like, oh yeah, you know, he'll be okay. But it's like, dude, you take somebody away that is, take something away that for a long period of time. Yeah. You're gonna change their mindset. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, it's, It'll be a fucking battle. It's intense. Yep. Good times. <clears throat> I think today, um, I just saw an advertisement for it. I'm going to probably get the pub cheeseburger from Wendy's, by the way. Oh. It looks fire. I'm not eating that shit during the week anymore. Are, you, are you going I'll there think today? about it. I, I think so. I might... Uh... I might bother you to get me a nugget. Yep, they're fire too. A spicy nugget and a regular nugget. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, need, to eat, need to do some eating. Yeah, I I've, I messed up. I didn't eat enough. You lost weekend. a lot of weight. Lost a ton of weight this weekend. You lost like ten pounds. Yes. Well, Holy bitch. shit! Yeah, dude. Wait, how much do you weigh now? I was like one ninety one this morning. Oh fuck! I I've been liking to stay at like that two o three to two o five. <laughs> Yeah, I eat big both nights we were in Nashville, but just one meal. I, I'm usually eating that big a few times a day. Yes, it's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is important. I'm gonna meal prep the rest of the week. I yeah. just forgot to uh, do it last night. Still a Taco Bell box in the fridge. Oh, we gotta throw that out. Yeah, it's yeah that's fucking disgusting. Yeah. 
So the pub burger from Wendy's, what's on that bitch? It's a pretzel bun. Pretzel bun. I like pretzel buns. I do too. I'm a whore for them. Yeah. With the cheese. Mm. It's been. I've been dieting for a day. I want a good bagel. (laughs) I want a good bagel sandwich. Fuck. Lasted a few hours. (laughs) Um. Wendy's. I'm looking it up. No, it does look good. I saw it whenever I drove through Wendy's. Uh, when I got Wendy's a couple, two, three weeks ago, it was on the menu. Oh man, is that are those French fries on it? They look like uh, yeah, or fried onions. Probably some fried onions on one. That's of French them. fries. Curly fries. Hmm. Bacon. What's that white sauce? Nothing I want on there. I think it's Chipotle Ranch. Oh. Bob likes Chipotle. Oh, I lied. It's smoky honey mustard. Oh, way to ruin that fucking Sorry. burger. Warm beer cheese sauce. <laughs> Crispy fried onions. Uh, that's what those are, not french fries. I'm not into it. Munster cheese. Munster. I like Munster. Yeah. It's I like a mild that. American... Yeah, like with uh, like oh, they got a chicken cheese. sandwich too. Pickles, tons of pickles on there. They have a homestyle chicken sandwich. Oh, oh. fuck yeah, I'll fuck with that one. Or I might just get one of each. <laughs> no, That's I fun. won't eat it myself. Like I'll get, you can have half. <laughs> you can have half. I won't eat it. I won't eat it. I Shane, eat it we just... had uh, we had phenomenal tacos. Oh yeah, really? On, In Nashville on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Baker Bakersfield Bakersfield tacos. Yeah, Bakersfield something. Is it a Mexican place? Mm. They have a big, they had they some high end fucking here. tequilas there though. There's a Bakersfield here. There's a Bakersfield here. Yeah, it's uh, what's that place in Oakland, Shady Side? Um, Oakland or Shady Side? No, it, it's fucking called something like the not Market Square. What's it called? Something else. I don't remember. No, but these were like fire, really authentic and it was delicious. Fresh yeah, right ingredients. Here. Bakersfield. It's right by Condado on Penn Ave. Oh shit! Yep. Oh, so it's a, it is a chain. Is it like the same place? Yeah, yeah it's a chain. Yeah, that's look at us. Look at those. Oh things. yeah, that's what we ate, dude. Yeah, they were yeah. fire. Yeah, Bakersfield. Well, now I feel like a fucking uh, not authentic. It was a chain. No, it was good. It was delicious. Yeah. I liked them. They did a good job. They were like a, like a hipster taco. Yeah. I Nothing like wrong with that. No. Mm, it's okay. Mm. Just wear flannels for no reason. And like, it's like they stole my look, but don't do the. I'll totally shit. buy your overpriced tacos. So yeah, that's okay. I'll just go Taco Bell. No, wait. No. Better. So Shane. Yep. While you had time to yourself this weekend, did you find any good questions for everybody? I have some good questions. I'm excited this weekend. This weekend we did. Uh, lots of people really do enjoy the questions. Mm-hmm. They have a ton at their job sites. They have a ton like emails that they send to each other. Oh, I have a funny story. Uh, the one guy has fucked up Fridays. He's like at work. We have fucked up Fridays. We're like we come in morning. We ask the question. We all have a, we all have the question, and then they all answer it together. It's like a cool thing they do on Fridays, mm-hmm. which I thought was really fun. Mm-hmm. Like once a week, it gives them something to look forward to on Friday. Um, Really cool. The guy's like, yeah, this one guy, he went a little too far. It was a fucked up question. And he's like, all of a sudden, everybody got real quiet. Like, it went too far, like a little problem. I don't even want to repeat it. It was so bad. And I'm like, yeah, that one's a fucking no-go. We get a couple messages like that. Yeah, every now and then it's like, <laughs> there's always that one guy that's like, you went just too far. Fuck. Yeah, come on. And it's not even about, like, it's not even about fucking your mom. It's just being about fucking being like, whoa, dude. Yeah. Some of them is like nasty, like disgusting, <laughs> like uh, borderline, like um, wrong. Yeah, <laughs> like even even though fucking your mom's not right, they at least make pornos about that shit. Yeah, <laughs> oh, stepbrother. Here, this guy, <laughs> those messed fucking it. memes, by the way, are funny as shit. Oh yeah, the stepbrother fucking memes hilarious. on the internet, <laughs> fucking funny, dude. This guy, uh, Chad, messaged me. He's a podcast listener. He sent a company wide email to some of the questions to all of his co-workers and they were like extremely fucked up and his boss happened to know the podcast and that's the only reason he didn't get fired <laughs> oh my God. Like, like hey guys listen i know fucking jimmy <laughs> sent this email out and was a little fucked up but there's this guy on this podcast 
and he tells him to send company-wide emails. He kind of did it. It was offensive. We're going to remove it and pretend this didn't happen. We get, I warned, warned him. Warned him. again. We're good. But uh, what was your answer to number one, everybody? <laughs> We actually, the one couple brought the cards and oh, shit. wanted us to sign them and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. The, I think she said she uh, took it to like her, like maybe a church group or some sort of club group that she's part of, <laughs> and she never got invited back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, huh? Yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, this one guy said, would you rather every time you burped, you shit your pants, or every time you sneezed, you blow a load in your pants <laughs> i'm like god oh, man that's actually a pretty good question yeah every know. time i burped i sh- 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 burp i shit my pants i don't ever want to shit my pants no i'm i'm I, really not cool with shitting my pants i think i'd sneeze because it covers up like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go. whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> You're the only person that gets like sleepy after you sneeze. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Hold on, let me. <sighs> Where's the salsa? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'm not shitting my pants. That's a rough one, dude. Fuck. Like, could you? I just, I, mm-mm. man, I just would not feel okay about myself if I shit myself. Like, if I shit myself, I'd, I'd feel pretty bad about myself. I don't know what I'd do. I'd, I, yeah, I'd be like... Like, depending on <sighs> the situation I'm in, like, how, how, how do I get home? Yeah. Can I walk to my car? Do <sighs> I have to get in my car like this? <sighs> Which car am I driving? I can't believe that I shit my pants. I'm not going to feel good about myself in any I'm way. I'm going to be or very form. upset, but as long as like no one else knew I shit my pants like when it happened, like Let me ask you this. It's like uh if say you or I shit our pants and we were together, like uh, one of us. Yeah. Is this like the thing that like it's like kind of like the hmm, okay. I'll never talk about this again. Yeah. I'm never mentioning it ever again. No. Mm-mm. I'm not going to tell anybody you shit your pants. No. Because if you tell somebody that you shit your pants, they weren't there to experience the fucking just horrible feeling that came over you. Yeah. Like, because other people would be like, bro, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, like, the person that wasn't there would be like, yeah, dude, that one time you shit your pants. Bro, you weren't there. It was a fucking big deal. <laughs> I know I wasn't, but it's fucking funny. <laughs> oh, it'd be tough. It would be fucking tough. Yeah. I couldn't. Uh. Yeah, it's a big fear of mine. <laughs> it's like, and that's my boy why he carries the extra underwear. <laughs> yep. I shit my pants waiting for you. <laughs> oh, damn it. No, I'd be, I'd be a huge help to whoever like, I was with if it happened to them. I'd be like, hey, dude. I'm going to drop you off at the Target, go in the bathroom. I'm going to buy you new stuff. Like, just stay there. Yep. Clean yourself up. Yep. I'll, I'm going to get everything taken care of. Yep. And we're going to burn your clothes. Yep. You're going to fucking leave them in the stall. Yep. Get the hell out of there. Yep. Mm-mm. Yep. You have some fresh fucking champion shorts. Yep. Yep. Fresh baby wipes. Sanitize yep. everything. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's get you home. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get you home and get you to bed. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Get in the bed of the truck. <laughs> Actually, you're not sitting inside here. Just lay down. Called you an Uber. Here's 20 bucks. God See you damn later. it. Jesus. All right, Shaner, what do you got for us today? All right. <clears throat> Would you rather be an amazing painter or a brilliant mathematician? Mathematician. Painter. Wow. Easy. Why? Because I want to be smart and feel good. <laughs> yeah I don't want to be a painter Mm-mm. nope not I even. don't respect them at all not even to like <laughs> paint faces <laughs> I'm good at painting faces <laughs> I, ah. <laughs> fucking LTD <laughs> limited edition no I just said that because you said you would be a painter no I think personally like um uh, I do love good art. Like, uh, like, are we thinking? Are we taking yeah. painter as like not painting houses, but like an artist? Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, that's what you said, right? Yeah, I meant faces, but yeah. Jesus Christ, Shane. I did. No, as an artist, I think that it is cool. Like, uh, I consider both of these to be, like, such a such a unique craft because people that are really good at painting, bro, people that are good at painting is incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Like, my sister's pretty good. My grandfather and grandma, they were fucking phenomenal with oil paints. Like, very, very good. Um so I think that like that's a that's a special craft and a talent and a skill, and it's also like it takes time to do be able to figure it all out. Um, but for for me, the math it would just make I don't know. I've always wanted to be incredibly intelligent. I was good at math, but never actually like like pushed myself to be. I don't know. I just like lifting weights. So I think that if I could do anything, I'd love to be be able to figure out a problem like fucking Goodwill Hunting. Be the janitor somewhere, just be phenomenal at math. That's Goodwill Hunting, Seth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that. I've never seen that movie. No, I think I'd like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to paint cool shit. I'm pretty good with designing and art, like digital stuff. But like, I'm okay at drawing. But like, I th I think it's fat. If you can paint, you you can illustrate. And like, I th I think it's one of the coolest talents yeah. in, in art. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I, 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 from my sister and uh, my grand, uh, like a, the, the way you, like the actual stroke mm -hmm. is a big deal as well. Yeah. Like it's not just like, hey, you can do this. No, there's an actual fucking like craftsmanship to it. Like handwriting calligraphy ama oh, amazes me. I love that shit. My mom or my, my grand was awesome at it. She yeah. tried teaching us when we were kids. I just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. But like I look back at it, and I'm like, man, like that because she that was her thing. She was very good. At, she was very talented artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, calligraphy school. <clears throat> That's my my cousin Lauren. She is one talented artist. Oh really, dude? Like unreal. Like watercolor painting is like her shit. Does she actually like do stuff with it, or is it just like a home project thing? Yeah, I mean she. Uh, it's what she went to school for as well. It was just a passion of hers. She did like some big, it was kind of like a internal fulfillment for her. Like mm -hmm. she painted shit for my grandmother and the family and like does like portraits of her kids and like it's fucking wild. No shit. Yeah. Really cool. Pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I think it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's a craft. Hmm. Like you can, m my grand, my grandfather did this one, this one, uh, paid, uh, painting of a soldier it was fucking phenomenal mm -hmm. it was out of control it's just a tough you know a tough thing to be like for like a profession it's it's tough to make it oh fuck yeah because it's like unless you get noticed or, or something I don't occurs even, i don't know how i don't even know how it's cool or why it's cool or whatever it is like yeah. i don't know what separates it mm -hmm. i would just look at it and be like because i mean you look at stuff they fucking sell like the banana and the duct tape like like look at this art like dude you're a fucking joke <laughs> like don't even give me that shit you sack of dog dick <laughs> Like, there's people out there that are actually talented to do cool things and take yeah. time and effort. And, uh, like, I don't even know how many hours goes into something, but I find that to be yeah. fascinating. Not somebody duct taping it to a wall and saying this or that. Art. Ugh. Fuck off. Go fuck the wall. You sack of shit. <laughs> fuck the wall. <laughs> Hashtag fuck the wall. <laughs> Go well. stick your dick in that hole on the other side. Get shot by a samurai sword. <laughs> oh. That's like my biggest fear of a glory hole. <laughs> samurai sword to the samurai, dick. Samurai sword to the dick. You wouldn't even feel it for like a minute. It'd be so razor sharp. I could never do a glory hole because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not or because like of a disgusting. guillotine, like a guillotine, or it's like a cigar cutter hole. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like I don't. No. No. Not doing it. I can't believe people actually do that stuff. Like it's a real thing. Like, aren't you afraid somebody's just going to go, I hate the people. My, blah, it was a dick. Shh. Yeah. But uh, I guess, like, I see, that's the creative part about, like, art is, like, what do I paint? I don't even know. I don't even know where to start half the time with my, 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 own, my own shit. What should I draw today? What am I going to draw? Gonna I really gonna, like birds. i draw this cup. <laughs> All right. I'd get bored really quick. Yeah. It's like <laughs> shit. God damn it. Yeah. See, that's, a, that's, a, uh, their, their mind definitely works a different way, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. 
And again, it goes back to being a mathematician. Their mind works a completely different fucking way. You know what I mean? Two different, two completely different uh, uh, phenomenal things, and their minds work completely differently. I hate numbers. So I, I love have, them. I have no, uh, no desire. Yeah. Zero. See? Different people doing great things, even though we're not doing either one. Still cool. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on, Shane. All right. Would you rather go a month without drinking or a month without masturbating? I'm good with not drinking. For yeah, a while. I'm cool not drinking. I'll, I won't drink for a month. I've done that before. <laughs> There's no reason. No, I can't not touch my pecker. It's mine. Fuck the alcohol. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> it's been there my whole life. Yeah, dude. I, I can't wait till SJ finds it and Hannah realizes like how this is all going to go. Yeah. He once he finds his dick, he's never stopping. Mm-mm. Hand down the pants, just grabbing it. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for her to see it. It all comes full circle, and they understand once they see it occur because it's, it starts at a young age. Mm-hmm. Once it starts, it just doesn't stop. It doesn't even stop whenever you get older because I still haven't fucking changed. I'll be 36, still love my dick. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves their dick. Yep. I don't want nothing bad to happen to that thing. They even have dick injections for people that, just, that aren't the same anymore. Love dick. Dick is good. I mean... <laughs> For you. For you. You like... <laughs> I mean, you like your own dick. I don't like your... I mean, I care about your dick, though. Thank you. I, I, mean, I care about your dick, too. I care about everybody, even if... You, I don't care if I don't... I just think that everybody should be enjoying. I care about vaginas, too. Mm-hmm. They need a good pounding. Mm-hmm. They need their... They need They need loving. Mm-hmm. It's important. It's important. It's life. Yeah, you can't not, like, what am I supposed to say? I don't care about that. Everybody knows that they feel different after sex. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. Way better. Way better. After good sex, you're like, Jesus, I don't even know I don't know what was wrong with me. A new person. A little fucking hate sex in yeah. there. That's great. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. Take your fucking anger out on each other. After it's over, be like, I love you. Would you like to eat some salsa? Maybe we should have a fucking burn one. Think about it. Have a nice meal. Go at it again. Yeah. I'll pull your hair even harder this time, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Yeah. Now we're talking. I care about your penis. I care about your vagina. That's how it should be. I, I can't disagree. No. I got molested the other night. It just happened. Middle of the night. Just, Woke up. You're trying to just get some sleep in? I was just trying to get some sleep. Next thing I know, hand down my pants, not my hand. Looked at him, said, this is not my hand. Holy I'm shit. I'm getting jerked off 1132 at night. Don't know what's going on. Yeah. All of a sudden... I'm fucking surrounded by tits and ass, and I'm like, is this a dream? No, it's not. I'm going to fuck you hard. Yep. It was great. Man. It was a lot of fun. Good for you. I know. That's awesome. It was, I, I felt really good afterwards. Yeah. It was good. See? I care. I like the late night. I haven't had it in a while. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah. I felt like, I don't know, I felt really special. Felt like I did a good job. Yeah. I was sleeping. I looked good. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm so irresistible. Like, look at me sleeping here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Good times. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't really want to fuck with anybody that doesn't care about somebody else's genitals. <laughs> no. No, I care about them. You should. Yeah. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Gotta lay the pipe. Yeah, it's got to be. And there's so many different kinds, too. Yeah. There's there's good lovins. There's sweet lovins. There's cuddle lovins that turn into some fucking hate lovins. Mm-hmm. Then there's good hate fucks. Sometimes it's normal, mm-hmm. just regular sex. Yep. Those are okay two days. Mm-hmm. But then every now and then, you got to fucking spice it up a little bit. Yeah. You can't not, like... Can't just... Can't go through the motions. No, don't do that. You can go through the motions when it's just, it's you just got to get off. Yeah. But every now and then, if you just go through the motions and just get off, it gets boring. Yeah. Then they start, then the mind starts wandering. Your mind's wandering. Her mind's wandering. Then you're like, fuck, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to fucking control this motherfucker and go at it. Mm-hmm. Ass slaps. Get dirty. Say mean things. Mm-hmm. See what happens. <laughs> Stick your face in there. I don't know. Yeah. Clean it up. Maybe draw a design in your pecker and, and like your 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 little, your little hair down there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like a, f- like a fresh design. Yeah, I have a flat top now. Hmm. My nafro flat topped. We're good. Eighties. Do, do like a fade. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Do you? Yeah. Like a fade down or a fade up? 
up, up. <laughs> or well, yeah, like like my hair, like so nice and cleaned up. Closer you get, and then <laughs> like a party at the top, <laughs> like a four up top <laughs> <laughs> to a skin fade. <laughs> Oh my god, that's fucking so funny. I love it. <laughs> it takes a while. I mean, my shit's just a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Looks kind of like a fucking jungle. Like um like the Amazon, like the really really dark, completely covered, <laughs> scary part of the Amazon. That's my dick right now. <laughs> oh, so that's where those people get those tiger pelts at. <laughs> Fucking tiger pelt down there. Yeah, good luck. If you can get in there and slay that motherfucker, you it's all yours. It. It's yours. <laughs> it's all yours if you can find it. Uh, just be careful. If you fucking take that, take the <clears throat> canyon around to the other side, you're in for a whole different fucking world. Yep. <laughs> good luck. Careful. Uh, all right, another one, Shane? Yep, last one. All right, yeah. good good time. Would you rather wake up with a different face but the same gender or a different gender but the same face? Wait, different face, <clears throat> same gender? Yep. Like so That's like waking up as Bob. Yeah. Or do I want to wake, wake up with the same face? Yeah, so you're you with a vagina. I mean, that's a no-brainer, dude. Come on. Why don't we change this a little bit? Because if I just have this face, I'm not getting fucked. We just got done talking about me caring about genitals. If I turn into a woman, I'd like to be a very good-looking woman. This is not a good-looking woman's face. Look at the size of this fucking nose. Look at these ears. Look at this beard. <laughs> no. Yeah, the beard would have to go. It got to fucking go. Got big cheeks. No. Mm -mm. So if I woke up as Bob, like we changed places... That type of thing, like the movies, mm. that'd be funny. That'd be a riot. Like that movie, this, what was it? The Change Up with Ryan Reynolds. And oh, Patrick yeah. And, uh, that was pretty funny. Jason Bateman. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah, it was a good time. <clears throat> that was hilarious. <laughs> He's fucking up all his shit. Because he's a complete degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> he ends up pulling it out, though. Uh -huh. It was good. It was good. But if I woke up as a woman... Uh, yeah, no, I don't really. I don't. Really, you know, is it like a permanent thing? No, I can last a day. Ah, oh, days nothing. Days nothing. Maybe like a week. I gotta have a little longer than a week. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of like. Yeah. I wonder because you know you wonder like uh, like as a woman like what it's like to feel like as a woman. I just feel like it'd be a pain in the ass having like a vagina. Oh, it'd be fucking horrible. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. I'd be super high maintenance because of it. Oh, yeah. You're already high maintenance. I am. Yeah. You had a pussy, you'd be even more. It'd be a pain in the dick. Yeah. No one would, no one would hang out with me. No, nah, you'd probably be like that. Uh, 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 yeah. Fucking bitch. Uh, just a cunt. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm. Nope, no vagina for me. No. But I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like I, as a woman, I just... I don't know, because, you know, I'd want to see what it feels like to be a woman. I don't. For a little bit. You know how you get treated? You go to a bar or something, you're all done up. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and then, like, they'd probably want to feel what it's like to just helicopter your dick, like, for no reason, in the mirror by yourself. You're like, yeah, this is a dick. <laughs> They'll never feel that. Mm -mm. They'll never feel a good dick day of walking in somewhere and being like, my dick is phenomenal right now. You know, mm -hmm. or like just the opposite sex of going to uh, the whole process of finding another, finding a person, whether it's just a fuck, whether it's to, uh, you know, have a nice relationship with mm -hmm. where you meet that whole thing. That'd probably be, that'd probably be the one thing that uh, I'm curious of because you think differently, you know, men and women aren't the same. We don't think the same. I'd probably be a whore. You would? I don't know. Probably. I definitely do only fan stuff for money. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have any. I'd be like, fuck it. Yeah. What about you, Shane? You're awfully quiet over there. I'm keeping my dick. Keeping your dick, huh? Mm -hmm. hmm. mm. With what, what's like, what do you get in return? A different face? Yeah, a different yeah. face. Yeah. I'd be like Matt Damon. 
With your own dick. With my dick. He might have a tiny pecker. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he might. You don't want that? Nope. Jason Bourne definitely has a tiny pecker. I think so, too. Oh. Jason Bourne's a pussy. God damn it. I don't want to think that way. I care about people's genitals. <laughs> like, there's a dozen other characters that would beat Jason Bourne's ass. Yeah. Including, like... Liam Neeson from fucking... Listen, like, I don't think Liam Neeson's losing to too many people. No, he's not. Bruce Willis from Die Hard. Bruce would fuck up Jason Bourne. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, and, like, laugh about it. Yeah, Bruce Willis is just, he's, he's you know, he's he, you can't kill him. No. He lived through, through so many things. He's going to live forever. Multiple explosions. Apparently, he has a huge dick, too. I could see that. Bruce Willis hung like a fucking horse, apparently. Heard Kevin Costner is... Quite the man, huh? Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. I believe that. 100%. Yeah. What about Mark Sinclair? <laughs> Let's not bring that up again, okay? We got fucking. So YouTube fucking told me that Mark Sinclair's videos we can't monetize okay. on the video because we played his video and his song. So I watched a video of Mark's on his Instagram over the weekend, and he's like, "Hi." Oh and my like, god. He's like, "Look at this rainbow behind you me." You see this rainbow behind me? <laughs> and there's no rainbow behind him. <laughs> And like he just went off on this thing, like he sounded fucked up. He mm. is, he he is. And before the video started, he was lip singing his own music that was playing in the background. Quarantine didn't do him any favors, huh? I, he's going I think he's nuts. a little funny. I think there's something going on with him. Mm-hmm. Like he might be doing some drugs, and I don't know. I, I hate to say that, but I just know that I don't know too many people. I don't really know anybody like what he's doing. So, Man. I mean, if I was. If I was a hundred millionaire, I'd probably make my own music too and be excited and be fucked up all day. I just can't see him in the booth, like recording it, like getting into it. Actually, I'd probably be on a fucking boat somewhere. Making music. No, fishing Mm. (laughs) with my kids and other cool people in the neighborhood that want to go fishing on a big boat and do cool shit. Yeah. I wouldn't be making fucking music about it. I'd have a studio. I'd want my own studio and lay down some track. I wouldn't listen. Like, I feel like Shane would want to be my audio engineer. You also wouldn't be invited on the boat. That's okay. You'll be listening to my music. I'm, all the kids <laughs> will get on the boat. Did you hear Did you hear Bobby D's new track? I'd be like, fuck you. Get off my boat. <laughs> That's the name of the song. <laughs> fuck you. Get off my boat. <laughs> <laughs> I can already see the video. You kicking people off your fucking boat. Yeah, fucking monster yacht. It'd probably be it'd probably be some country song. <laughs> fucking yeah. fuck you, get off my boat for sure. <laughs> Let's listen to the latest track from Bobby D. <laughs> fuck you, get off my boat. I can see it being played in like Grand Theft Auto, like the video game for sure. It comes on the radio station. Yeah. You're flipping through. There it is. Yep. Yep. Fuck you both. <laughs> Maybe we should record a video. I think Maybe we should. do a music video for it. I mean, we could just use this mic later and, f- and record the song. Oh, man, it's a big spider right there. Where? Right. That's not too big. There was a giant wolf spider on our living room floor. Oh, yeah? That night. thing's fucking huge. That's what she said. <laughs> never. Classic. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> It is. <laughs> thanks, it is. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for listening. Make sure that you share the shit out of this podcast. Also, continue to listen, support the companies. Thank you so much for everything. And uh, don't forget to ask uh, all your coworkers, your friends, your family these questions. Spice up the life. Good Fridays, good days. Fucking A. Thank you. Bye-bye.